I wanted to say something, Jason, before, you know, there's a common thing that you hear right now, which is, oh, economic sanctions don't work. And I just wanted to talk about that for one second, which is, I think, I, th I think there's a lot of people, there was a lot of chatter that historically economic sanctions aren't enough, which is why you can't draw a very clear, bright line between that and military intervention as well. And I thought, and I, as I thought about it, this is why I, I think you can actually fight an economic battle and an economic conflict without it pulling you into a military one. And the reason is actually because of what's happened in the last 40 or 50 years. You know, you have like the, the most critical infrastructure in the world, I think, is the financial infrastructure, whether we like it or not, right? Because, you know, energy infrastructure tends to be more localized. Other forms of infrastructure are localized. But the one real asset that is absolutely global and universal is the financial payments infrastructure. And, you know, what has really happened is that you can really cripple a country or an entity when you blacklist them from these organizations and these networks. And so this is why I actually think people underestimate the severity of um, of economic sanctions if done correctly. And I think before, you've never really, other than, you know, Venezuela and a couple of other, you know, North Korea. North Korea, Cuba, Venezuela. Cuba, you've never really explored the totality and the impact of this kind of sanctions on a large global actor. Which we're this now is almost greater than sanctions. You're being you're not allowed to participate. It's not even like you're saying you can't export this, you can't import this. It's you're now not allowed. You have no seat at the table. I think the crude oil example and the airline industry example are two incredible examples of the ripple effects of these sanctions, right? So again, just to reiterate, like if you're a European based refiner, in order for you to go and buy that oil, you may have, you know, a working capital line from a German bank. Well, that would violate the terms of that bank now. And so you can't go and get that, right? If you actually have that oil on hand, and you refine it into gasoline, and you want to put it into the open market, and you call Flexport as an example and say, help me get this stuff to XYZ location or Maersk or somebody else, they won't do it. 